Having an app published on the App Store is a crucial aspect of becoming a strong candidate when trying to land your first iOS job. So in this video, I'm gonna share some strategies for coming up with an idea and some beginner mistakes you should avoid. Welcome to the channel. If you are new here, my name is Dave and I make videos about iOS development with a focus on helping new developers who are looking to start a career in iOS. I currently have three apps published in the App Store and they were one of the biggest selling points that I had when I got my first job in iOS. And so it's my opinion that if you are learning iOS with the goal of getting hired, that publishing your first app should be your top focus. It may not be something enough by itself to get you a job, but you're likely not gonna get any sort of traction when you're applying to jobs if you don't have anything published in the App Store. And before jumping into how to come up with an idea, two things that you should be getting out of your head as you're starting to approach this are comparison to other apps that you're using on a daily basis, as well as the idea that this application needs to be 100% unique. Keep in mind that most apps that you're using on a daily basis have massive teams of highly experienced people that have been working on this application for many years. And so if this is your first app, that's great. It just means that you're gonna have to think really small and really narrow in terms of the features and the functionality because the reality is you don't have years to work on this. The other reality is that your app doesn't need to be 100% unique. There are over 2 million apps on the App Store today, and so good luck trying to come up with an idea that has no other similar apps to it, but that's totally fine. You know, there are hundreds of stock tracker apps and hundreds of productivity timer apps, but they all have their own differences, so as long as you put your own spin on something, you can run with it. Remember that the primary goal here is just to get something published on the App Store. The goal is not to build a million dollar company. So my recommendation is to come up with something very simple and very narrow that does one thing well, and that's it. Now, if all that makes sense to you, but you still have no specific idea to run with, here are a few resources to help get your creative juices flowing. The first is the App Store Top Charts. So of course you can view this on your phone, but also online and really get a sense of what is popular and what people are creating in any given category. So again, the idea isn't necessarily to copy a specific app, but more so just to get inspiration from what other people have done and then apply your own twist to it. Another source of inspiration is free APIs. An API is basically a gateway that you can access to data that's managed by another source and then pull it down into your application. If you just Google free APIs, you can find a ton of lists, but I'm gonna link to a specific GitHub repo that has compiled a bunch of free APIs with a ton of different categories that Sean Allen also mentioned in one of his previous videos. So real quick, here is the repo and there are a bunch of categories that you can see here. And so if I click on a category, it will show me all of the available APIs. And so for instance, if you are really into Formula One like me, you'll see that Ergast F1 has an API that I could use. So if I click on that, it will take me straight to the API website and a good website will have documentation available about what data it can provide you and how you can use it. And of course, what data is and isn't available will determine what functionality that you can build into your app. Next, if there are any specific problems that you'd like to try and solve or any topics that you're really into, try coming up with an idea based on that. And that's just because it'll make the process much more enjoyable for you when you're working on it. And when you inevitably face challenges, you'll be that much more likely to, to push through and see it to completion. Now, this isn't totally essential because again, the point is just to get anything up on the App Store. But in my experience, I've always built things that I would personally use. And it definitely adds a level of significance and motivation. And finally, I encourage you to have a dedicated spot on your phone where you can write down app ideas. I've been doing this for years because you never know when an idea is gonna come to you. And at least for me, if I don't write it down immediately, I will forget it. I personally use OneNote and I think I have over 25 ideas written down, most of which I'll never do anything with. But now that way, when I start my next app as a way to learn Swift UI, I already have a list of things that I can choose from. All right, so now you have your app idea, that's great. What are some of the biggest mistakes that you inevitably will encounter to some extent? And the answer to that question is perfectionism and not having a minimum viable product approach. If you are familiar with tech or startups, you may know about the importance of a minimum viable product or MVP, but essentially it's the concept that new businesses should value speed in launching their initial product over spending a lot more time developing a vast amount of complex features. And while this is particularly important in a business context, I do think that the same principles apply to a personal app. And one of the great things about software is that you can continually improve and add to it. 
I wanna say that again, you can continually add to and improve the first version of a product or app. Now, don't get me wrong here, the intent of this whole concept is not to justify launching crap products or apps. The intent is to ask yourself, what is the minimum amount of functionality and features that I can code? And then once I code that and only that, I should launch it. And again, as soon as you launch something, you can immediately start working on new features or stability improvements. So there's no reason to think that your version 1.0 is gonna be your final version. My favorite podcast right now is one called Launched, hosted by Charlie Chapman. And on a recent episode, he had David Smith on, who's the creator of Widgetsmith, which was the top widget app once Apple released iOS 14, and it has over 50 million downloads. David has been developing apps basically since the iPhone came out and has dozens of successful money-making apps as an indie developer. And he was saying that even he gets to a point in all of his apps where he literally has to write down on a physical sheet of paper in all caps letters, no new features. And he tapes that to his monitor as a reminder that he's only allowed to work on bug fixes until the release. And so to wrap that point up, if one of the most experienced app developers out there has to continually fight against the urge to add more functionality to a launch, then it's probably likely that you will too. And that's okay. Just remember that employers care less about the level of functionality and complexity that an app has, and more just that it's actually published on the app store and that you've completed something. And so I hope that gives you some freedom to know that you can launch your app fast and then always refine and improve it after the launch. If this was at all helpful in choosing an app idea, or if you got any value from this information, please give the video a like to help more people discover it. And if you wanna see the three App Store apps that I had published when I got my first job, I'll link those down below, as well as a link to my GitHub page where I have them all open source. And as always, if you wanna see more iOS videos in the future, subscribe to the channel so you never miss a video, and I'll see you in the next one.